Hello everyone, Mike Jezoshek, CPA and founder over at Jetro. And today I want to go over government loan options available to those small business owners that have been affected by coronavirus or COVID-19. So when we look at the up options that the government has made available to small business owners, there's really two main options. The first one is called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, which we're going to refer to as the EIDL. And the second one is the Paycheck Protection Program, also referred to as PPP. So the first one I want to talk about is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, EIDL. These are the loans that have been around for a couple weeks now since all of this started. Um, these loans you apply for directly with the Small Business Administrative Administration, the SBA. You can use these loans for payroll, fixed debts, accounts payable, and just basically normal operations uh, to run your business because of the affection of, of coronavirus. The amounts of these EIDL loans are up to $2 million, and they carry an interest rate of 3.75% and the term is up to 30 years. So these are the loans that have been available for a couple weeks now. Again, uh, you apply for these directly with the SBA, um, up to $2 million in funding with a 3.75% APR with terms up to 30 years. Now here's the caveat with these. There is no, no part of this loan is eligible for forgiveness, but there is a grant and the grant is available up to $10,000 and it can be used for business purposes and for payroll purposes, and that grant does not have to be repaid. And this is for, also if you put an application in for an EIDL and you get denied, you can still keep this $10,000 grant money. So again, no forgiveness on these loans, but you do, you are allowed a quick money grant of, of $10,000 to be used for business purposes that does not have to be repaid. And you get that even if you get denied for this type of loan. So that's the EIDL, a pretty basic, you know, operates very similar to your normal type of loan. You apply directly with the SBA. Now the second loan I want to talk about today, and this is where the majority of this uh, talk is going to be focused on, is the Pay Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP. And for this loan, you apply for this loan not directly with the SBA, but with SBA approved lenders. And so there's 18, 1,800 plus banks across the U.S. that are SBA approved lenders where you can apply for this loan through. You can use this loan for payroll, mortgage interest, rent and utilities, and interest on debt that was obtained prior to February 15th of 2020. The amount of this loan is two and a half times your business's average monthly payroll with a $10 million max. So most people on here, you're probably not going to hit that $10 million max. So your amount of this loan would be two and a half times your business's average monthly payroll. These loans carry an interest rate of 4% APR with a term of 10 years. Now the biggest thing about these and why we're going to put a lot of focus on them is that they offer a forgiveness piece to them and you can potentially get 100% of this loan forgiven if you meet a certain criteria. So what I want to talk about is deeper onto this paycheck protection program. What makes you qualify and what doesn't? Again, the EIDL is pretty much your typical type of loan. You get up to a certain amount, um, no forgiveness, but there is that $10,000 grant. And then the paycheck protection program, this is a little bit different. This is uh, the loan amount is based on payroll amount. Um, your average pay monthly payroll amount, and a lot of this can be forgiven if a certain criteria is met, and we're going to talk about that next. So the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, who is eligible for this type of program? Basically, if you're a small business with less than 500 employees, you're eligible. And this includes, and this is key, this includes individuals who operate as a sole proprietor, independent contractor, or someone who is self-employed who regularly carry, carries on any trade or business. So this isn't just for LLCs or S corporations. This is for basically any business with less than 500 employees, including those that are self-employed. You also have to be in operation as of February 15th, 2020, and you have had to have had employees or independent contractors. Now there's also a good faith certif certification that you must sign in order to be eligible. And with that good faith certification, you have to certify that the uncertainty of the current economic conditions based on coronavirus make this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the business. 
You also have to certify that the proceeds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll or to make mortgage, lease, and utility payments. And then finally, you have to, you have to certify that you do not have an application pending for a loan to be used for the same purposes as this one. Note that if you already applied for and got approved for an EIDL loan previously due to coronavirus, there is the ability to fold that loan into this one if you made that loan after one uh, January 31st of 2020 and then before this program became available. So keep that in mind that if you do already have an EIDL loan, there is the ability to fold that into the PPP loan. So again, what makes you eligible? Small business with less than 500 employees. This includes sole proprietors. You have to be in operation as of February 15th of 2020. And you also must make this good faith certification. You have to certify that the uncertainty of the effects of coronavirus make this loan request necessary to support ongoing operations of your business. And you also have to make a certification that you're going to use the money to retain workers and maintain payroll or to make a mortgage lease and utility payments. The big thing about this loan is it's part of the stimulus package. So the idea is the main purpose of them is to boost the economy and help employees out, help keep people employed. And so that's the intention of this loan, which is why they're, they're making you certify that that's what these funds are going to be used for. So pretty easy eligibility. Most of our clients or all of our clients are going to be eligible for this, generally speaking. Now let's get into the details. How much can you borrow? At the beginning, we talked about two and a half times your average monthly payroll costs. Again, this cannot be more than $10 million. Now you might be saying, okay, two and a half times monthly, average monthly payroll costs, but what are payroll costs? Payroll costs include salary, wage, and commissions paid to U.S. employees. They include payments to U.S. independent contractors. It includes, includes group health care benefits, including those premiums. And it also includes payments to retirement benefits. Now there's one big caveat to this. Any wages over $100,000 are excluded from this calculation. So if you have an employee that made $150,000 or $250,000, just their first $100,000, nothing over and above $100,000 can be factored into this calculation. So as an example, let's kind of do an example calculation. Let's say your prior payroll for the last 12 months was $120,000 in total. So you take that, divide it by 12, which is an average monthly payroll of $10,000 per month, and you multiply that by 2.5%. So your loan amount would be $25,000. Let's try that again. Let's say that your last payroll for, or payroll for the last 12 months was $1.2 million. That means you have $100,000 average monthly payroll times it by two and a half, and you're able to, uh, your loan amount will be $250,000. So again, the amount that you can borrow is two and a half times your average monthly payroll cost, not to exceed $10 million. Payroll costs include salary, wage, and commissions to U.S. employees. They include payments to U.S. independent contractors. It includes group health care benefits, including the premiums for that. It includes payments of retirement benefits. And the only caveat to this is about regarding the salary wage and commissions is that any wages over $100,000 are excluded. So just the first $100,000 is allowed in this calculation. Two and a half times your average monthly payroll cost is the amount that you'll get as a loan. Now, the biggest part of this is the forgiveness piece. So let's talk about what makes this type of loan forgivable. Basically, you're eligible for loan forgiveness equal to the amount that was spent on the following items during the eight-week eight week period beginning on the origination date of the loan. So if your loan originates on April 1st, these costs that happen between April 1st and the eight weeks after that are forgivable if you use it for these items. Payroll costs, interest on mortgage obligation. Now, this doesn't include principal, so just be the interest portion on mortgage. Rent payments you know, related to a leasing agreement and payments on utilities, so electric, gas, water, telephone, internet, etc. Now, a key thing to note that the purpose of this bill is to keep employees employed. So the amount that can be forgiven can be reduced if you have a reduction in the number of employees or you reduce an employee's wage by more than 25%. 
So if your employees, if you if you lost employees or you're reducing their wages, the amount that's forgiven can be reduced because again, the purpose of this is to keep people working, keep people getting paid. Note that if by uh, if you rehire or eliminate the reduction employees or the reduction employee pay by June 30th, then you can still be allowed for forgiveness. So again, what makes you eligible for forgiveness? You have to use that money for payroll costs, interest on a mortgage, rent, or utilities. And if you have a reduction in your number of employees or you reduce an employee's pay by more than 25%, that amount that gets forgiven can be reduced. And again, these are costs that happen within an eight week period once the loan originates. So let's go into some details of this loan. First, there's no collateral or personal guarantee required. Any amount that is not forgiven, so if there's anything that you, is not forgiven, you didn't use up all the money for the required costs, any amount that's not forgiven is charged a 4% fixed interest rate. There are no payments required for the first six to 12 months, and that amount has to be repaid over a 10 year term. Now the big thing is, is that amount that was for, that was forgiven is not subject to income tax. So let's do a quick example. You, you are given, uh, your loan amount equates to $25,000. So you get $25,000. And in the eight weeks after you get that amount, you pay for payroll costs of $20,000 and let's just say rent of $1,000. So, that, so you have $4,000 left over that's not forgiven because you didn't use that money on costs that are allowed you would have then that $4,000 would turn into a loan, not forgiven, and that'd be 4% fixed interest rate, no payments required for the first six to 12 months, and it would be repaid over a 10 year term. Now that $21,000 that was forgiven is not subject to income tax. So again, this is an extremely valuable tool for business owners that have been affected by coronavirus. It's the ability for them to keep employees on payroll, keep paying employees, and uh, you get a great benefit of it. You're getting paid. The government is helping supplement that pay to them. So we're encouraging most of our clients to check this out. Now, how do you apply for this? I mentioned at the beginning, this is not through the SBA directly. You have to use a qualified SBA lender. And so as of recording this, the details have not fully been sent yet to the SBA qualified lenders. So they're not officially accepting applications yet, but they will be this week. And when they start accepting applications, that's when you can start getting your information in, submitting the necessary documents. And this is meant to be a fast track loan. So they're trying to get these funds to business owners as soon as possible to again, keep employees employed. So this is supposed to be a quick turnaround, which we will see how that um, actually works out. So again, just want to kind of go through everything. You have two loan, two main loan options from the government re regarding coronavirus. You have the EIDL, which is just your typical loan, um, 3.75% APR with a term up to 30 years. No forgiveness, but there is a $10,000 grant that does not have to be repaid. Then you have the pay, pay, Paycheck Protection Program. This is, the loan amount is based on two and a half times your average monthly payroll. Any amount not forgiven turns into a loan and uh, there is forgiveness available on this. So that's the key part with the PPP loan is that there is forgiveness if used for the right amount or for the right items, as well as no reduction in employees or reduction in employee pay. Most small businesses are going to be eligible for the PPP program as long as you are operating as of February 15th of 2020 and less than 500 employees. You do have to make a good faith certi certification indicating that you have been affected by the uncertainty of coronavirus and that you're going to use these payments to maintain payroll. Again, the amount is two and a half times your average monthly payroll. So if your payroll for the prior year was $120,000, divide that by 12, which is $10,000 per month. Multiply by 2.5, your loan amount is $25,000. If you use that for payroll costs, interest on a mortgage obligation, rent or utilities, that amount can be forgiven. And that forgiven period starts eight weeks after, so that it's the eight weeks after receiving the loan. So you have, when you receive the loan on April 1st, you have eight weeks to use up those funds for the, for the allowed 
um, expenses. If you do that, use it on the right amounts, it can be forgiven. Again, that forgiven amount can be reduced if you reduce the number of employees that you have hired or you reduce the pay of employees by more than 25%. So if you have any questions on this, definitely reach out to us. This is a great opportunity. Both of these loans are great opportunities. We're leaning towards the PPP because of the forgiveness amount, but if you do need a lot of lending, you might need to, to, to lean towards the EIDL. But either way, these are great options provided by the government to help us through this tough time. And we're encouraging clients to take advantage of them if you qualify, and this is something that can help your business out. So again, reach out if you have any questions, and stay safe, everybody.